So I'm Deborah Sides. I'm the performance technique analyst, uh, work for High Performance Sport New Zealand, but focusing always with uh, New Zealand athletics and predominantly the pole vault squad. So some of the athletes we've got in the pole vault squad here are Eliza McCartney, who's the bronze medalist from the Rio Olympic Games, uh, Nick Southgate, Olivia McTaggart, and Imogen Iris. So we're going to have a look at Imogen's footage. So she's one of our younger pole voters who's going to be going to the World Junior Champs uh, coming up very soon. So she's kind of come in uh, at a younger age, is kind of working up as part of this squad with Eliza, with the coach, Jeremy McCall. So the pole vault's kind of the unique event in that it's kind of combining athletic speed with also the gymnastic ability of getting over the bar. So the first initial stage of the pole vault is the run-up. So athletes will choose um, a run-up. They can either go, full run-ups will be something like 16 steps. So that could be 40 meters out. Shorter run-ups, they might only go off 10 steps. But the main aim of that run-up is to generate as much velocity as possible, transferring into the vault. So the purpose of the pole vault is to convert that kinetic energy from the approach into the vertical energy to get over the bar. All the jumps in track and field uh, use this system. Most though would lose energy as they convert it to the vertical energy. The pole vault is kind of unique in that it has the additional benefit of the strain energy, so the elastic energy in the pole. So the athlete can actually increase the amount of energy stored, which is how they're able to jump kind of these five meter heights. So they have the run up to uh, develop the maximum velocity. And then that takeoff point is really important. So athletes will take off approximately between three and a half, four meters back from the box. And they plant the pole and then using force just through that left leg takeoff or right leg, um, generate that vertical velocity, which then uh, elevates them into the air. The takeoff is a really quick phase where they've got to concentrate on planting the pole, generating the vertical force, and then uh, taking off. The maximum pole bend will occur just after takeoff, so they call that the C position. And that's where the athlete is using all their upper body muscular strength to exert as much bend on the pole. So that helps store elastic energy in the pole, which then when the pole straightens, that returns that energy to the athlete and enables them to elevate up in the air. So the poles are all made of a fibre class uh, material, like traditionally in the olden days they're made from wood, they're now progressed to be made from fibre glass and carbon fibre. And this is really good for, it keeps them light, but it also means they can store that energy when they're being bent. Um, an athlete will typically actually take between nine to 10 poles to a competition, all of different lengths and then of different flex ratings. And then based on the height that the bar is at, they'll change the pole they're using. So they may go to a stiffer pole later in competition to help them reach those higher heights. The best thing for the athlete to do is that after that point when the pole is returning, is straightening and returning the energy, the athlete needs to try and stay as close to the pole as possible. So they'll try and keep their body upright. So they're going feet first up in the air, staying close to the pole so that they're not losing energy either way. Trying to keep their legs as close together as possible. And then when they reach that maximum height, the aim is to bend their body over the bar. So this is very similar to the Fosbury flop technique in high jump, that if they can bend their body, this actually allows their centre of mass to pass underneath the bar. So the centre of mass then actually lies outside the body and they can orientate their body over the bar. And then the most important thing is then releasing the pole back so that the pole doesn't knock over the bar at the top.